Good morning, Agape. Good morning. Good morning, live streamers. My name is Reverend Veronica Vias. If you do not know me, I have a ministry. I teach mindfulness to children. And so today's conversation, you know, I always ask Reverend Lee, what topic would you like? And he said, slowing down to be present. I'm like, how perfect. I teach pre-K through fifth grade. I teach them how to be present to their thoughts, their feelings, and their emotions. I teach them the power of gratitude and compassion. But I teach them to be right here, right now. So how often do we as adults let our life kind of pass by? Anybody ever drive and all of a sudden, 20 minutes later, you wondered, like, <laughs> how'd you get where you're at? And completely, you're like, we're in a conversation with yourself and somebody that's not there. And then you suddenly realize, I haven't been present for the last whatever 20 miles. Anybody ever have that experience? Or was that just like me? <laughs> all right. So, you know, we do that with our life. We're not present a lot of the time. And the conversation is about slowing down to be present, not just to what the activities of our life that we're participating in, but I want to bring it to the perspective of being present to the presence that is God. Psychology Today had an article, they talked about the ontological mode, the mode of just being to the preciousness of life, and how often are we in the doing of life, whether it's mandated by our jobs, or just society, or the to-do list that we've created for ourselves. But I feel like we've lost our innocence that our children have and what we once experienced. I'm going to share about my nieces and nephews because they're the ones in a long-term illness that really brought me to the preciousness of the present moment. But we get in the two syndrome, T-O-O. -O. We work too much. We drink too much. We party too hard. We shop too much. You know, we're doing two, 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 two. We're trying to fill a God-sized hole with something other than God. And some of the symptoms of that are avoidance. Because part of mindfulness is I want to be present to everything. I want to be here in the moment. I especially want to be present to my feelings. And we as adults, and I teach children this, do not like the difficult emotions. They're challenging, they're prickly, they're messy. We don't like to feel sad. We don't like to feel grief. We don't like to feel the loss, the pain, the anger, the frustration. That's just a part of our humanity. But what happens is we avoid them. Or we're in a relationship we really didn't want to be in or don't want to be in, and we are avoiding that difficult conversation, that difficult change. And so we work too much to avoid that conversation. Or we're anxious all the time because we feel like we haven't done enough, that we're going and we're going and we're going and we're trying, by the end of the day we're exhausted, and yet we don't feel fulfilled. And that's just a condition of a materialistic world. Now, I'm not saying the materialistic world is bad because I do like having nice things. I do love being in this form. But the invitation is, is how, what's it going to take to slow you down, to be present? For me, it was a long-term illness at 30. I'm in the film industry. I'm ready to, I'm moving in the direction of being Academy Award director. That was my intention. And then the greatest teacher of my life came in, which at the time I didn't appreciate because it was quite frightening. An illness that took me out for 10 years. But that illness took me to the depths of my beingness, to the preciousness of life. And that's what brought me to mindfulness. Frank Ostaseki says mindfulness is just living in direct experience. And when you're experiencing a long-term illness, you're directly engaged in pain. You're directly engaged in fear. You're directly engaged in loss. But what it did is it brought me to the present moment. And so I'll never forget this, which is kind of interesting because one of the um, long-term effects was the loss of my memory. When I was sick, I was deathly ill with chronic fatigue immune dysfunction syndrome. I would forget things in the middle of it. But I remember I was sitting in my backyard, you know, I was living with my partner, and I'm digging up weeds and I'm just crying, and I'm just like, I don't understand, I'm 30, I don't know what's going on. And in my periphery vision, there was suddenly this marmalade sunset that caught my attention and redirected my thoughts and slowed me down to the present moment. And in that moment, I was, ready, I was readily available to engage with the sunset. And then what it brought me was to the awareness that all I have is this holy now. All I have is this moment. And so the conversation about slowing down is like, what? Are you avoiding that you're missing out on the beauty of life? What gift are you willing to give yourself in this moment so you can be present to the preciousness of every moment? 
Like I said, I teach children mindfulness, and I love the little people because I'm a favorite aunt. And it was my nieces and nephews that, after four years, I came home, and to the graciousness of my parents, to move in with them to recuperate. Little did I know it was going to take 10 years. But each niece and nephew brought me to the preciousness of the moment. Great master teachers said, be like little children, and it is true. They are in the joy and the vitality of the moment. When something happens, they cry, then they're over it. But I remember these moments distinctly when my nieces and nephews would get, just bring me right there, laying on the carpet, you know, I mean, on a, a blanket out on the grass with Isabella and Hannah and watching a mother's sparrow teaching her babies how to fly. Or Anthony, when he was three, and once again, we're outside playing, and he's, he's like seeing the sunset, and he's doing this, and they couldn't pronounce my name. They called me Yayak instead of Veronica. And he's like, Yayak, Yayak, and he's painting the sky for me because he noticed it. Bella, when she was little and we were putting her in the car and she saw the moon and she goes, hey, we have one of those at my house. <laughs> Matthew, who was a shy one who would go into the room and he'd get this blue plastic golf club and he was like playing Star Wars. He was a warrior of the light. Vincent, who would dance at the drop of a heartbeat. Hannah and Macy, who would chase fireflies and butterflies. They brought me to the present moment in the depth of an illness and great loss. They gave me a deep appreciation for life. They brought to me a joy that cannot be filled with anything materialistic. In Buddhism, they call it the hungry ghost. It's a ghost with a very little mouth, a really long neck, and a really big stomach, and it can never be filled. It can never be filled. And so if we're always constantly doing this, we're actually missing out on this. And when we slow down, we're able to be present to the presence that is God. Thich Nhat Hanh, the great uh, Zen teacher, says, present moment, wonderful moment. Present moment, wonderful moment. Now, we spend half of our life either focused on the past or the future. And, and I, I noticed the other day, when you move into the prayer pose, you're vertical. Your hands are vertical on your heart. The present moment is vertical. But oftentimes, we're looking at regret of the past. Or if you have a happy mini memory movie, like in mindfulness, it actually is really good for you to think of something from the past, and it releases dopamine in your brain. You feel fabulous, but you got to bring it present. But the majority of time, we're in regret. Or we're thinking about the future, which is great to anticipate what we're going to create. But science says we spend most of our time in anxiety and worry. So if I'm in the past, and I'm not, you know, in celebration, so that's making me feel good, I'm in rumination, which I'm the queen of that, and, you know, I've got this mind that's like a little gerbil that can go on and on. It could be like the Olympic champion of rumination, you know? It's like, oh, how many times am I going to play that story again and again? And I'm not here if I'm there. Or if I'm worried about the future because we're in the midst of a pandemic, and yes, there's great loss and uncertainty, and I don't know what's going to happen with teaching. I'm teaching online. What's next year going to look like? Are the schools going to be open? I'm in worry, and I'm missing the present moment here. And to slow down and be present is the greatest wealth we actually have. Now, I'm also inviting you, though, when that fear and that anxiety comes up, to slow down and be present to that. When the grief arrives, to allow it to be there as your teacher. The couple of weeks ago, I was walking and this grief, this overwhelming grief came over me and it felt like lava. It felt like lava, it was slow, and I was really intensely present to it. And it's like, okay, but in this moment I'm walking and I'm seeing the pelicans and the birds, but this grief is here and it needs to be you know, expressed, even though I've expressed it so many times. And I just allowed it to be. Because we avoid those difficult emotions. But when I slow down, and I'm present, and those emotions move through me, I can get to the purity of this present moment. And that's where the gifts are. That's when you suddenly notice the nuances, the dance of the light and shadows, that little flower that you've never paid attention to before. See, Mother Nature is like the queen of bringing us to the present moment. I call her a queen. Because in spring, she's screaming colors, right? So if you're looking at spring, and I'm driving, and there's flowering trees, I'm screaming in delight of the divine. I'm like, oh my god, that's so gorgeous, you know? And if somebody's driving with me, they're like, could you focus on the road? All right, could you be present to the road right now? 
And then fall has the crimson and golden and marmalade colors for us to stop in adoration and devotion. We have forgotten that we're spiritual beings having a human experience. Everything is the expression of the divine, everything. And then when we stop to be present, we are actually evoking the presence, as Reverend Michael Beckwith said the other day into, his, into the Now Summit. We're evoking the presence of God. We're inviting ourselves in direct experience and participation with the divine. When we slow down and we're present, we actually then have more energy and time for the things that we want to go do. Whether it's our job or maybe like some, you know, like a book that you want to turn into like a TV show, something, it gives us that strength and that energy and that vitality to then allow ourselves to move in that direction. But slowing down to be present is present to all of it. What the long-term illness taught me, and the pandemic has reinforced for a lot of us, is that we have no time to wait. We have this now. We have this now, this moment, this space to be present. So here's the invitation. Are you in the too syndrome, too much? Are you avoiding something? Are you willing just to allow it to be present and be your teacher? Grief, what do you want to share with me? Pain, loss, what do you have to say to me? Oh, hey, there's joy. Let me take some of that, all right? Happiness is present. But we bypass it all because we're so busy, so focused on the doing and the getting. Because let me tell you something, at your memorial service, they're never going to say how much money you have in the bank. And it's great to have money, but don't get me wrong. But they're not going to say, well, she died with $2.5 million in her bank account. He answered 233,000 emails, all right? They're, they're going to talk about the memories and the experiences of when you were present. Because the key to a good life, how did you live? How did you love? How did you serve? So here's a reminder that I get from my nieces and nephews, that the present moment is the only moment we have, that the preciousness of our humanity experiences itself in both the depleting emotions, the difficult emotions, but also in the positive, generous ones, that the past serves as that pathway that brings me to this holy, sacred now, and that the future is created by being present in this now. That every choice that I make, every intention that I set, every seed that I plant, then will reveal itself, but I enjoy it in the now. And when I slow down, I can notice the things that I never noticed. So take a moment. We have the song Yellow. I'm going to invite you to do what I share with the children. Find two things that are yellow. Just look around the room. Notice two things that are yellow. All right, now find something red. Do you notice anything red? Mm -hmm. I got a tambourine over here. Mm -hmm. Right there. Right there. How about something green? Mm -hmm. Anything green? Right. See anything green? How about black? Like my pants. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so the, the, the whole potency of this, this, this practice is that when you slow down, you can start to notice, oh, look at the yellow there, and look at the red there, and look at this moment here, and look at that smile there, and look at that person there, and there's God, and there's God, and there's God, and there's God, and here's God. And when you slow down to be present to the presence, that's when your life is rich. That's when the wealth of your beingness you can embrace. Because I realized in those moments with my nieces and nephews, that was the most profound experience of my life. And then when I started teaching children mindfulness and was even more present, it has been the depth of my being that brings me to the appreciation of the divine. Present moment, wonderful moment. Whether it's pain, okay, what are you teaching me? Whether it's a celebration, oh, let me experience that fully. Because all we have is this holy sacred now. So here's the invitation. Just notice with non-judgmental awareness, because mindfulness, I'm present right now in the moment non-judgmentally. If you're having a difficult emotion, let it be there. My friend Sarah says, Veronica, you're the genius. You are like the master of the art of feeling. Because a long-term illness brings you to the depth of your mortality. That my spirit will continue, but this personality, this body is one shot only. And every moment became a gift to me, every breath, was a gift. Everything that I could see, everything that I could feel, everything that I could experience, I'm annoyingly present to some people, all right? 
just annoyingly joyful. Did you see that? Oh my God, there's like a hawk. And they're like, okay, okay, I'm driving, you know? <laughs> so the whole point of it is, if you've missed out on connections with the one you, you love, be present in whatever way you can. Because what I learned from watching my nieces and nephews grow, just all of you who've had children, they grow up fast. Time is accelerated. And all I have is this holy now. I know Jean can attest to this. Once you have grandchildren, right? They bring you present to that moment, that joy of their being, when they laugh and giggle at the silliest of things, when they bring you fully to the gifts that are available. I am wealthy beyond measure because what of my nieces and nephews gave me. So here's the invitation. You're going to stand in this present moment, here now, my body temple now, with no judgment now, because the pandemic did bring me some extra pounds, but that's okay. <laughs> I enjoyed every New York Times cooking recipe I tried when they're in that children's place. But the whole invitation is, what is the gift in this moment? What have I missed without judgment so then I can remember to be present right here, right now? When my partner is having a conversation, am I listening? When you're in a new relationship, all that excitement that happens, and you're so present, but then it kind of like fades as you get deeper into relationship. No, keep it present. Because all we have is this holy, sacred now, present moment, wonderful moment, right here, right now, I am. That's my mantra, right here, right now, I am. So close your eyes and say, that, say this together out loud, right here, Right now, I am. Now feel your heartbeat. Feel your body on the chair. Right here, right now, I am. Right here, right now, I am. And drop into your heart for the moment, and what is there present for you? What is the one thing that's seeking to reveal itself in this moment? Maybe there's something you didn't want to hear, and right now, invite it into the moment. Invite it present. What do I need to hear? Right here, right now. I am. And as you breathe into this present moment, no matter what the past is, we don't stay in regret. We bring it to right here, right now, I am. And whatever is seeking to reveal itself as your future, you, you go with joyful anticipation, but you bring it to this present moment. Right here, right now, I am. Present moment. Wonderful moment. And when the pain arrives, give thanks that you're aware. It will transmute. When the losses accumulate, have gratitude for the awareness of being present. But when the joy is dancing with you, and the laughter is calling you, and you think you need to go check those emails, but you got little people who are inviting you to play, go play. We have this one life. And in every moment, find God. And every moment, see the divine dancing. And every moment, notice that this is the expression of the Holy One in through and as all of life. In this moment, you can find one thing that is good, no matter everything that is not. And in that moment, when you slow down and you are present, your life will feel whole.